Hey, Feasting on Faith, I'm Pastor Sean, this is Pastor Jesus, and we actually have a guest cook that's with us today. I want everybody to say hello to Kea, this is Pastor Jesus' wife. So, some of you probably have never met or seen Kea, so this is always good to get some family members of some of the staff, and we get a chance to see Kea, and Pastor Jesus has baby strapped. Uh, I've got baby the, right on me, so. Uh, to, mm-hmm. the, uh, to his stomach there, so they got the new baby with them as well, so. We hope and pray that this Bible study is just a great time for you. We're going to be cooking along. Thank you for whether you're worshiping with us or whether you're here at this Bible study with us from either Christ our Savior or Word of Life. We also are streaming on both social media platforms. We're uh, 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 streaming on our Facebook as well as YouTube on both Christ our Savior and Word of Life's page. If you would like the ingredient list, you can always pull up the Facebook page from Word of Life, which is facebook.com forward slash W-O-L Naperville, and W-O-L Naperville, and that's going to have a, um, an ingredient list on our page from the announcement that we posted yesterday. So that will give you the ingredient list that you can follow along with, and we are going to make a couple of dishes, but tonight we are focusing on side dishes, and side dishes are going to be an extension of what our main scripture passages are going to be that we talk about tonight. So as always with uh, the way Pastor Jesus and I do our Bible studies, we hope and pray that you will uh, comment and interact with us. We can follow along in real time with any comments or questions that you might have. So please, like last week, don't hesitate to reach out to us and to follow along with what we are doing. But as we begin, um, Pastor Jesus and Kea are going to actually kick off tonight with their part of what we're doing and what we are cooking. So since they are going to start that, I'm going to open with a word of prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks tonight for this great opportunity to continue this Bible study and to just have some fun as we're cooking and we're studying your word in great detail. So be with us as we talk about all of the wonderful things that come out of Scripture and we, cre- um, and we get a chance to connect it with the food that we're eating, and so that it may be all, in all that we do, a great blessing for your glory and for your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Jesus, you're up. Amen. Awesome. Thank you so much. And yeah, like Pastor Josh said, thank you for having us tonight. Today, I brought my wife here. Say hi to everybody at home. Hello. So I'm going to be kind of going back and forth with our microphones, so uh, I'll kind of talk, and then I'll, I'll uh, ask Kaya kind of, what in the world is she doing? And that, you might be asking yourself, well, Pastor, you're kind of cheating because it was supposed to be Pastor Josh and Pastor Jesus. Well, you know what? She is an extension of me and I am of her. So we love to do it. So, okay. Kea, first and foremost, what in the world are we making today? Well, today we're going to be making an English trifle. English trifle. And we're still, even with the English trifle, we're going to be connecting that with today's, uh, with scripture and God's word. So uh, first, I think is important for all of you. If you didn't quite catch the ingredients list and you're sitting there thinking, oh my goodness, an English truffle sounds delicious and I need to make it. Maybe you can watch. As always, you can always, whatever we're doing, you can always watch these, uh, for example, last week's, uh, if you didn't have your ingredients with and you went out and bought, you can always rewatch these later. They're always posted after. So you're so invited to whenever, you know, you want to and you can, you can always come back, watch the video and follow along the steps and make it at home at your leisure. So, Kea, what are the ingredients for today? Okay, so... Our in- entire ingredient list? Uh, just the main ingredients. What are we going to use? What, what do people need to have? Okay. Well, um, for the custard, we need four cups of whole milk, eight egg yolks, half a cup of sugar, four tablespoons of cornstarch, one and a half teaspoons of vanilla extract, and half a cup of butter. Awesome. And for the cake, uh, you can use white cake, yellow cake, pound cake. But today we are not going to be using either of those. What are we going to do? We're going to use my favorite. What are they? Madelines. There you go. Madelines. So uh, if you can see online, we're going to be using these. We all washed our hands beforehand. So me touching the the food and everything is going to be okay. So Madelines as our base. Uh Uh-huh. For the cake layer. And then we're going to be brushing it with some cream sherry, which... I'm sure you guys are familiar with. If you come to church or especially at Christ Your Savior, you'll know that we use cream sherry for our communion wine. And then once that's soaked in, we're going to um, put some seedless raspberry uh, jam on it. Mm -hmm. And for the fruit layer, I've already prepared it, actually. Mm -hmm. It's... uh, it calls for two cups of fresh strawberries and one cup of raspberries, but I chose strawberries, so... 
We have uh, just two pounds of strawberries sliced up and macerated. If you don't know what macerating is, it means to uh, put it with a little bit of liquor and uh, sugar just to kind of get it a little bit sweeter and juicier. So what I've done is I've added about a tablespoon of cream sherry and a tablespoon of sugar, and I'm just letting it kind of get a little better for us. Uh huh. And then we're going to be making some whipped cream at the end just to be part of the layer. Just got to whip up some cream and add a little bit of powdered sugar in it. So right now, I am simmering the milk. It's almost ready for me to add in the, uh, the eggs. So I actually have to prepare the eggs now. So I have eight, I have eight um, egg yolks right here. And I'm going to add four tablespoons of uh, cornstarch. And then after that, I'm going to add, let's see. I'm going to add half a cup of sugar and one and a half tablespoon, teaspoons of vanilla extract. Awesome. So she's going to go ahead and add the cornstarch to the egg mix. While she's doing that and adding the cornstarch uh, and the vanilla extract, I've got a couple of things for us. So uh, scripture, you might be wondering, Pastor, where in the world does scripture talk about English trifle? It doesn't. It doesn't. Uh, I don't even think that English trifle was a thing around the time that scripture, any of it, was ever written. But while it doesn't talk about uh, English trifle per se, uh, scripture does talk about a couple of things. It talks about hospitality. It talks about sharing. There's a lot, a lot of scripture references that talk about what it is to be brothers and sisters in Christ and also what it is to be nice, be hospitable. Uh, uh, generous uh, and uh, I don't think hospitable is the word. Hospitable is bad, right? When you're hospitable, okay, be hospitable. I thought that was a bad thing. So, be see, every time we always do this, I always learn the meaning of some of the words that I thought meant something else. But okay, so how to be hospitable to other people, especially uh, those that are in need, especially those that uh, may not be so uh, fortunate or have some of the uh, things that we have. So, uh, you'll notice that an English trifle, and I'm going to start like this. Trifle isn't a small dish. It's pretty big. When you make a trifle, you're not really preparing that for oneself. In fact, if you eat the thing by itself, uh, you're kind of diving into, I would say, gluttonous territory, which, you know, the Lord always forgives if you, if you ask for forgiveness. There's many times that I've, you know, eaten one too many Madelines. But, okay, so, English trifle isn't a small dish. What does that mean? That means the English trifle is a dish prepared, made, so that others can enjoy with you. So when you make this English trifle and when you prepare this, you're preparing it knowing that this is going to be something that you can share with others. Just like the Lord has shared in his blessings with you, just like the Lord has shared in his love for you, you preparing a trifle can be an indicator or a kind of a segue into you opening up your life towards the love that God has for you towards others. Kaya, have you finished doing what you're, let's say you were mixing? Well, yeah, we're, I have already mixed it all together. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can see, I don't know if you can yeah. see into this at all. Yeah, the milk is kind of like... The milk is bubbling mm -hmm. and it's starting to kind of froth and steam a little bit. So that means that it's pretty much ready. So a very important and delicate step for this is when you're making custard, you need to temper the eggs. Because otherwise, if you just add the eggs in, it'll, they'll cook, and you're not going to get the texture that you want. So very patiently, you need to um, take some of the milk and add it into the eggs before adding the eggs to the milk. So I'm going to do this and try to get the eggs to a decent temperature before I, before I shock them. And then once I... Once I mix it in, I'm going to add it until it gets kind of creamy. So I'm going to do just one more. She wanted to be a part of this live stream tonight, too. She was like, well, there's no, it's not fair if Kaya gets to be in it. So she wanted to be in That's it, too. True. So Okay, so now that these are a little bit creamier, you can tell by the bowl it's warm. Enough. It's, you don't want to mess this up. <laughs> okay, so now, and then we're going to very slowly... Add this to the scalded milk. Now, you don't want it to be boiling over because that's how you burn it. And you don't want to burn the milk. Mm -mm. And I've only ever made custard a few times. So, yeah, I'm just very slowly, you want to mix it in. If you've made scrambled eggs, you've gone too far. 
So now I've got it all in there. And I'm just going to stir it until it thickens. Good, cool, awesome. So uh, as she's uh, stirring that and everything, I'm kind of wondering, Josh, do you want, like, do you want to switch back and forth kind of for, between segments, or do you want us no, to completely cook our, our Absolutely, plate? go ahead. All you, right, you, all you, right. You, you do th when, when you're at a point where you can break for mm -hmm. a little bit, then I can do mine, okay. but you... Well, I guess another important step is you want to remove the heat after you've... Uh, after you've uh, entered, put the milk in. Mm -hmm. So while you're, uh, while you're mixing those eggs, make sure to uh, uh, remove the heat, turn it off. Um, while we're making this, as I said, kind of, this is, a, this is a, a, a plate that's meant to be shared, right? So Hebrews, I want to point your attention over to Hebrews. So this is uh, Paul talking to the Christians in, uh, 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 that he refers to the Hebrews as. And this, if you have it on the screen right there, it says, do not neglect... Do not forget to show uh, hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. Uh, what is this saying? I'm going to read it on my here. Uh, thank you to Ethan that's keeping up uh, with the scripture readings online. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for so by doing it, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. You never know uh, who that person that you're showing uh, kindness to is in, what their, what their situation is, who they are, and uh, well, the Lord has called us to be uh, uh, gentle, to be kind, to be loving, not just to the people that that I really, really like and really want to hang out with, but also to those that may have been uh, less fortunate or that I don't even know at all. Uh, showing other people who you are and what your Christian faith is all about is a perfect, perfect way to introduce them to Christ. Who has bought your salvation? Who has won everything for you? Who renews you every day? Who just like us in preparing this, uh, uh, this custard and uh, this, you know, all the stuff that we're making to share, he has shared his love, his salvation for you. So it's just, it's, it's, all, it's all, you know, a big kind of uh, uh, reflection of God. So, and what he does in our lives. Kaya, is there a stopping point? Or where are we at with this? Actually, supposed to let it bubble on the heat for a little bit. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, just just for five minutes, and then after five minutes, you're supposed to uh, put in about half a well, half a cup of butter. But wait for those five minutes. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's where we're at. Five minutes. Uh, Josh, do you want to take five minutes? Or no? Um, I can. Okay. Sure. Um, sure, go ahead, go ahead. We're, we'll, I'll, I'll continue after five minutes. Okay, so we do want to give a couple of scripture passages that kind of give us a sense of why we're making side dishes tonight. And the first one is Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. So Philippians chapter 4, verse 19 says this, And my God will supply every need of yours according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. And then Lamentations chapter 3 says these words, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. So those kind of set the stage for this idea that uh, we're getting this providence of God. The Lord does provide. We want to trust in God's providence and we want to rejoice in the things that he has provided for us. So when it comes to this idea of, about God richly supplying what we need and that there's this uh, never-ending amount of love or this never-ending amount of grace and faithfulness that God gives to us, sometimes we can be consumed with the big things or we can, can be consumed with kind of the main things. But these passages, uh, along with this idea of side dishes, reminds us uh, that God gives us so much more than just even the, the basic necessities of our life. And one of the passages that we have, or one of the passages uh, that we want to talk about, Matthew chapter 6, verse 11 says this, and we'll put this up on the screen. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11 says, uh, give us this day our daily bread. 
And so we are reminded that uh, as part of the Lord's Prayer, God does, re- um, uh, that Jesus wanted all of us to understand that God provides our daily bread, all that we need. And sometimes when we think of daily bread, we think of just like the really main, big, important things. Um, but then God, because out of his faithfulness and out of his love and out of his grace, he gives us so much more. And, and there's plenty of passages in the New Testament that talk about the overabundance of what God does for us, uh, that that maybe so often or sometimes we're so consumed with our, is, is God providing our daily bread? Is God providing our daily bread? That sometimes we miss all of the little mercies, the little things that God gives to us. And, and if we understand that God gives us so much more just because he loves us, and, and Jesus talks about this in a lot of different places, uh, but if, if we understand this idea that God gives us so much more than, than we could ever imagine or that we can ever really truly process in this life, Uh, then we're going to appreciate more than just the big things. We're going to appreciate more than just the main dish. We're also going to appreciate the side dishes, and we're going to give thanks for what comes with all of the other things that God gives to us. So Pastor Jesus and Kea are making a trifle, and what I'm going to be making is then, uh, it's called... um, Skillet coconut curry sweet potatoes. And so this is a pretty easy thing to make, um, but it's a great side dish and it's going to be really tasty. So the ingredients or the basic ingredients for this are going to be uh, two big sweet potatoes. You need to kind of skin them and then you need to dice them. So I've got them here like this and I've got it divided into two into two skillets here. Um, coconut milk and, and coconut milk, if you've never drank coconut milk, really tasty. Uh, And then also you're going to want some ground ginger and you're going to want some curry. And I particularly, I've got a bunch of different, I've got different types of curries in this thing. It's, uh, you can get these at Aldi and it's got four different types of, it's got four different types of, um, of, of, of spices in here, but I'm going to be using the coconut lime red curry just because that's one I like. And then dried cranberries. So part of this I'm going to use uh, the cran- dried cranberries for, and then part I'm not going to. And you guys can experiment with whether you like the dried cranberries or not. And then also the last thing uh, is going to be some, uh, it's going to be some, um, some garnish, some, um, uh, cilantro for garnish. Do you guys have salt and pepper over here? Okay, can you grab me some salt and pepper real quick, please? Okay, so what I'm going... Hmm? Oh. Okay, so what I'm going to do while they're doing that is I'm just going to... Uh, so you, you put the skillets on medium heat. So I've got them on medium heat already. So I'm just going to separate these... here into two batches. So like I said, one I'm going to do with dried cranberries, and we'll do that later on um, towards the end. And one I'm going to do, one batch I'm going to do uh, without the dried cranberries. So let's even it up a little like that. So now the recipe calls for, for the entire thing, calls for about 13 and a half ounces of coconut milk. So this is about twice that. So I'm going to put Um, oh yeah. We're going to put that there. So the recipe calls for, um, one teaspoon of, of ground ginger for the whole thing. So... I'm just going to put some ground ginger here. And if you're like me, you like to over-season because I love flavor. Ginger has great, uh, great flavor. Uh, and then it calls for two tablespoons of the, of the curry. So I'm going to put a bunch here. And I'm going to put a bunch here. So you can use whatever kind of curry that you got. I've also got, let's see, I've got the coconut lime red curry here, but I've also got sweet basil curry as well. But I'm just using um, that type of curry because I like that. So the recipe then says 
You want to mix all of this up and a little salt and pepper for seasoning. So I'm going to then mix all this up. While you guys are watching online, you all to uh, check in with us on the group chat, on the chat. Yeah. If you're on Facebook, go ahead and you can always say hello, just checking in where you're watching from. Or if you're on Facebook as well, you can uh, check in as well there. We love the questions. Uh, chime in and say, hey, you know, sweet potatoes are my thing. I love them or I hate them like me. I don't want them. Really? Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of sweet potatoes. Kaya loves sweet potatoes. and uh, you Not know, even at Thanksgiving? No, no. Yams? What do they call it when they like glaze them? Yams? Oh, uh, candied yams. Candy oh yeah, gems. yeah. I'm not a, I'm not the biggest fan, right. but 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 it does. I always am open minded about trying stuff. So uh, from Aurora, hey, there we go. Uh, my hometown. I grew up there, watching there. So hello, everyone that's watching us from Aurora. Sweet potatoes are so good. How Thank many you, guys, Marilyn. How sweet many potatoes of you guys have ever good. tried uh, sweet potato fries? Yep, we yeah. make a lot of sweet potato fries at our house. Just One of our, our, our middle son, Josiah, loves sweet potato nice. fries. So. Uh, Kaya's doing a couple of things over here, so we want to go ahead and check in with Kaya. Kaya? Just so you guys know, I am brushing our cake with uh, some cream sherry, just so I can soak it in. And then after it's soaked in, we'll, we'll move on to our next step. Oh, you know one of the things that excites me the most is not, like, cooking or baking, but watching Kaya cook and bake, because I know it's for me, too. And seeing her dab those, uh, those Madelines, I love it. Check in with us in the group chat. If you like Madelines, say me, because I, I can eat those 24-7. Had Madeline's at her wedding. That was the best. Our wedding was the best. Anyways, Josh. So mixing all this up, I'm actually because I am who I am, going to add a little more curry <laughs> here. Yes, yes, yes. Now, uh, Josh, would you say this is inspired? Is this like an Indian-inspired dish? Is this uh, Mediterranean? What is? What is this? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. I just found. Just kind uh, of. Hey, you like what you like, you know? Yeah, I yeah. love sweet potato, I like curry, I like ginger, yeah. and I wanted to find a nice, bold recipe that really says uh, this is going to give us a deeper appreciation of, of the, the flavors and, and the way in which God has uh, given us um, all things to enjoy. And so Amen. Um, Amen sometimes we uh, need to stretch ourselves and go out of our comfort zone when it comes to the opportunity or the ability to try things that we wouldn't normally always try. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. what I'm doing here is adding all of this. So, uh, so once you get a lot of it mixed up, you're still going to see some coconut, uh, some coconut milk in the bottom of the skillet. So once you have everything mixed up and you can see the seasonings and everything on there, uh, then what you want to do is you want to... You want to lower it down to simmer, so I'm going to turn it down to, to a simmer, and I'm going to cover it, and it says cover it for about 15 to 20 minutes, so it is 724, give or take, now, so in about 15 minutes, at about 740, give or take, between 740, 745, we will check this, and we will go from there. I will turn it back over to Pastor Jesus and Awesome. Kaya. Yes, yes, yes. We're just going to move this skillet over here so that we can bring over the metal lines in camera yeah. view. Well, we're going to wait those to soak a little bit. Okay. Before... Okay, so, uh-huh. Go ahead, Kaya. Uh, hopefully you guys can hear me. Sorry. Uh, we're just going to add a little bit of sugar. I'm not really sure how much, but I've measured out a cup and a half of uh, heavy whipping cream and... I don't know if any of you know how to bake, but I usually just kind of eyeball things like sugar. I measure yeah. it with my heart. So you eyeball things like uh, Josh does with the seasoning? Yeah, sugar, vanilla, you don't really... You I don't, don't think you can ever go over on the sugar. Oh, so, yeah. Well, you can. <laughs> but you Depends see, you're talking to. I think that the recipe said about a tablespoon, so I'm probably putting in two tablespoons. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when making whipped cream, you just kind of take your whisk. Mm -hmm. Out of the way, so yeah. we don't accidentally burn the church down. And then you just whip a while until there's stiff peaks. Now, you want to make sure that it's um, 
Stiff peaks, when it starts to turn yellow, you've accidentally made butter. Oh. So, uh, Wait, so what is this again? This is... So this is heavy whipping cream. Heavy whipping cream. And if you just whip it and whip it and whip it, you will get butter. But before it turns to butter, it's... Whipped cream. Whipped cream. What in the... That is insane. I see, these are things that I don't even know. So yeah. Well, that's that's well, awesome. I okay. might even add a little bit of vanilla, too. That would be amazing. Okay, so uh, Hebrews 13, again, that's what we were talking about. Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers. Now, um, I wanted to say, God isn't too worried. Uh, Josh, is there a name to your plate? It's called coconut. It's called coconut uh, and Co curry. Or skillet coconut curry uh, sweet potatoes. Okay. God isn't too worried if you don't make him a coconut curry skillet, right? God's not worried if I didn't make a trifle for him. He's not really worried about these things, right? So... So, so, so remember a couple times, a couple uh, Bible studies ago, I mentioned to all of you guys, uh, I think I'm talking a little bit louder just because the mixer, mixer is going on, but a couple of uh, segments ago, other, other Bible studies, I, we talked about this doing good deeds, right? Go, doing good things for people. Uh, like I said, God isn't too worried on whether or not we made or prepared food for him, but rather if we prepare food and show generosity, show love, give uh, to those that we have been placed in charge of and those that don't have anything, right? Showing the love that God has for you in the lives of other people that don't or may not have had uh, some of those things. So remember in our um, uh, communion of saints, right? The communion of saints. We believe in the communion of saints. What does that mean? That means that Josh gets to dine with us. Uh, we get to sit down together and share our meals. That means that Kaya is invited to our table, right? Uh, my neighbor next door is invited to my table. What does communion of saints look like in your life? You, as a Christian. And that's a, that's a pretty much open question for you to ponder and think as we kind of go into... Uh, uh, well, we're not in the season of Lent anymore, but we're pretty much just uh, celebrating Easter, Resurrection Sunday, and we're celebrating just that life is abundant in Christ. So the communion of saints is part of that life in Christ. So how does that look like in your life? How does it look like when we make and prepare these big, you know, feasts? Why don't you, right? Side dishes and uh, main dishes and stuff. What does that look like in your life when you share with uh, your friends, your family, and those that are probably not even in your radar as to who you share with, but then you go ahead and make that extra effort to share with. Uh, you're gonna notice that there's, 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 there's the Madelines, right? The Madelines that Kay is preparing, she's adding the, the, the j jam? She's adding the jam, she's spreading the jam on the Madelines, but the very important thing about these Madelines is that these Madelines are going to serve as the foundation of the trifle. What does that mean? How does, this, how does this relate? What does this have to do with us again, right? Okay, Psalm 34 says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Josh had this reading last week. Uh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who takes refuge in him. Now, preparing the, this trifle, these madelines serve as a foundation so that the rest of the trifle, if you will, doesn't crumble, doesn't get destroyed, doesn't fall over. Just the way that these madelines serve as a kind of foundation to that dessert the Lord is the foundation to our life, and upon him is our, our, where we can stand firm and say, this is my Lord, this is my strength, this is my refuge, right? So you can kind of see like the semblances uh, and kind of see like wh where you can kind of correlate a little bit as to, far, as to what, it, uh, when you're making these trifles. Okay, anything you'd like to add? Yeah, you got it. <laughs> Uh, I've got another one here for you, 1 Corinthians, and if you're watching, I, I, I like, you know, Josh, we have a lot of scripture readings every week, and I would love, love, love to encourage those of you that are watching online that if you have a Bible, and I already know that you read your Bibles at home, right? We all read our Bibles, but if you have your Bibles with you, and we go by, and we, as we name these scriptures, go ahead and open your Bible and highlight these verses, because a lot of times Josh has a lot of good things that we can uh, uh, use to understand or uh, to have a better idea of what the Lord is talking about. We highlight a lot of scripture readings.
readings too over here on my end. And a lot of times when you're thumbing through your Bible and you're reading and you see like First Corinthians highlighted and you get to read, hey, that, 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 that is what that means. And that's what, that's what this is reminding you of. It's a beautiful, beautiful exercise while you're watching home. If you're cooking with us, always have your Bible ready. First Corinthians chapter 10 says, uh, verse 31, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, kind of takes care of the whole thing, right? Whatever you eat, whatever you drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Uh, what else can I say? What else can I say than to rejoice in, in the gift that the Lord has given us, right? Everything, everything, knowing that he is our strength, our refuge, our provider of all good things. What else than to rejoice? And it's kind of impossible not to rejoice when you're rejoicing over sweet potatoes, if you like them, or a dessert, right? Like, it's just, it's just, it's just when you feel that joy, let it be a reminder of the joy that you have of knowing who God is and all the wonderful things that he has done in your life. Um, Josh, anything? All right. A couple of points that we want to think about, and we'll connect a couple of scripture passages to this, but... Uh, one of the great things to think about when we're thinking about these side dishes is the side dishes oftentimes focus us towards the main meal. And we want to remember that life is more than just our basic needs. Matthew chapter 6 verses 25 and 26 says these words. Therefore, I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is life not more than food and the body more than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. They neither sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not of more value than they? And then also Psalm 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Matthew chapter 7, verse 11, if you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more your Father who is in heaven give good things to those who ask him. All of these things remind us that we have so much more and that life is more than just the basic needs. It's, it's what we call, I want you guys to think about it this way, this gourmet of grace, or this gourmet smorgasbord of grace. So more than just the basic needs, we've got the entire gamut of what God gives to us. And so we don't always want to just focus on the main things, and we don't always just want to focus on the main dish and the main course, but we have side dishes for a reason, to supplement and to really enhance what we have in our main course and in our main dishes. And so if we're doing it right and if we're cooking right, those main dishes are going to be powerful opportunities to get people to uh, uh, just have a greater palate or a greater appreciation for things that are going on. And, and one of the other things that we want to think about when we think about side dishes as well is that um, when we don't always have to focus on the main dish, uh, we can understand uh, this idea of being able to feast in the desert. And, and, and kind of when there's this dryness going on, uh, God's going to provide even more than we need. And he's going to give us richly beyond what we can even imagine. So I'm going to do a couple more scripture passages here. Uh, and uh, so uh, Proverbs chapter 15, verse 17 says this. Uh, better a dish of vegetables where there is love than a fattened ox and hatred with it. So this reminds us uh, that the, there's value in simple, wholesome ingredients that we put in, like sweet potatoes, sometimes the cranberries, uh, when it's shared in love. So uh, sometimes we don't always have to necessarily focus on all the big things. We can focus on, on the small things. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 uh, verse 31. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. It encourages us to enjoy and appreciate the flavors and nourishment provided by the ingredients like sweet potatoes and cranberries in a dish that's prepared with gratitude. And also Colossians chapter 3. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. That's to encourage gratitude for the ingredients and flavors in the dish and recognizing all things as gifts from God. Pastor Jesus? Amen, Josh. Amen. Always good, good word from Josh. We can always count on him to provide the good word. Uh, right now, Kea is waiting for the custard. After, you know, how, how long do you think that custard should be in the fridge? If you're making the custard at home, uh, you probably want to chill it for 
Probably at least 30 minutes. Probably about 30 minutes. Now, in four... I it in the freezer, though. Oh, oh, so we'll... <laughs> um, okay, so, Kea, so we have successfully put the Madelines with jam, uh, uh, doused them with some cream sherry, and what are we going to... Do you want to... Uh, what, what's the next step? Are we just going to wait, or is there anything yeah, that you can prepare? Yeah, we're waiting for the custard. So, basically, okay. what we're going to do is we're going to put the Madelines in, the fruit custard and the cream and you want to kind of divvy up about a third of everything mm -hmm. because you want three layers Ooh. and then that's then really it should be chilled mm -hmm. before you eat it but yeah. we'll see what happens yeah we'll just kind of try it on camera and see i'm sure it's going to be good custard. yeah awesome so kaya is going to go check the custard right now uh like i said over here kaya has prepared a bunch of madeleines now while you have noticed that there's only you know there's so there's a bunch of them here right um, the Madelines are going to serve as that foundation, right? And if we're, and if we're co uh, comparing or trying to figure how this relates to our Christian faith, our Christian life, is a foundation, uh, the same kind of thing that, that God provides for us, the foundation upon which we can always rest on, knowing that our life is secured in Him. Just like Josh was saying, everything comes from the Lord, all good things. And not only, not only like the birds of the, you know, of the air and, and, and the fish of the sea, not only does God take care of them, and takes care of you as well, but he overgives. I mean, he oh, there's no uh, there's no greediness with God. There's always an overabundance. And what is how does that take us? There's well, when you're preparing a dish, right, or when you're walking around in life and you're looking out the window, or you're looking and, and you just see this overabundance of things. For example, right now, right, we're gonna add fruit to our trifle. Now, trifle, right, requires you to add fruit. Think about that for a second and what fruit is. Fruit is another way for you to see the beauty that God has given to you, to me, to Josh, to all of us to eat and enjoy the very fruit of the earth that he has provided. Where do you think it all comes from, right? Some of these things, well, yeah, a human made it, human, you know, human made, human, but ultimately all of this stems from the Lord who has provided everything for us to make. And not only that, but an overabundance. I mean, there's enough to go around. So, you know, I'm always making that push to share, share, share. I love to share, right? But, but maybe some of us have been a little bit more shy to share, maybe a little bit more, uh, 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 a little bit more reserved. Uh, why not, right? Why not? If you think about the overabundance that God has given to you in your life in any way, shape, or form, may that be an encouragement for you today to take a step back and say, you know what? Maybe next time when I make uh, something, I'll make enough to invite Sam over, you know, or invite Joey over or invite someone over. And, and, and even though it may be something that's a little bit outside of the box for me, I'm going to go ahead and do it because the Lord is good to me. And look at all this stuff that he has provided. But maybe not all the time, right? A lot of us have sometimes just what we need. But the Lord provides and the Lord guides. Um, I, have, I have here 1 Thessalonians 5.18. I think this is beautiful, and, and you've probably heard this at one point or another, but this says this, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus, right? This overabundance of, of ingredients that we have today, uh, that you have in preparing and cooking, uh, uh, may it all be a reflection of the love and overabundance that God has for you. Uh, in your life. It's a beautiful way to think. It's something that, that you just can't help but to think once you know God's word, once you know God's scripture, and he opens our eyes to see these things around us, to see these things. Because a lot of people are going to say, well, pastor, you know, uh, uh, it's hard for me to give thanks. It's hard for me to do this. It's hard for me to do that, do that, do that. Well, I encourage all of you, if your thinking is any of that sort, any, any, any way, you know, that's kind of going south or whatever, I encourage you to open your Bibles and read and really see all the richness, like we're doing here tonight. Just really see the richness that God has for you in your life. And only you can see, right? Only the Lord will lead you to realize just how overabundant he is. That where, where we're at, we can give thanks to the Lord, to Jesus Christ, and say, thank you, Lord, for what you've given me. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I have one more. Psalm 107. Psalm 107, 8 through 9. This says this, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. You know, one of the things that come to mind sometimes, my mind is always usually pretty like, 
I would say I would say I'm more of like an optimist uh, than usually, right? I'm more I look on the brighter side of things, but sometimes you know uh, uh, I think about other things. Like when I look at this Psalm 107, uh, for man uh, uh, and his wonderful deeds for mankind, for he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. You may be thinking to yourself today, well, if God was so uh, generous, if God was so merciful, if God was so loving, all these things that you're saying, Pastor Josh, Pastor Jesus, right? Why are there homeless people? Why are there people struggling? Why are they? Okay. Let us, instead of, instead of trying to push the blame on he who has literally given us everything, it would be maybe a, a good time to step back and remind ourselves that God works through you, Josh. God works through me. God works through you and every person that has Christ in their heart, every person that knows who their Savior is, every person, right? So when we think there's a homeless over there, there's someone in need over there, there's a food shelter over here, instead of thinking, why does this exist? Rather, let us think, this is an opportunity for me to show the care, show the care, show the love, show, uh, you know, that, that, that overabundance that the Lord has in my life. This is an opportunity for me to come here and show them what Christ is in the lives of us, right? So I have that. I think Kay is coming over, and I think we have good news. Okay. Custard. The custard is ready enough. If you're at home, I would suggest chilling it a little bit longer <laughs> until it's actually cold. Okay. Awesome. But it's not, not going to hurt anything. Awesome. So ready to go. Is there such thing as undercooked custard? Like, can that get you sick? Probably not. Highly unlikely. There we go. Highly unlikely. I'm sure one could. I'll sign a waiver form or something. Yeah, yeah. You go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we're going to start by uh, take yeah, down. Let's move this over here so that they can see right there. Now, ideally, you're going to want a trifle dish. Uh, it's kind of more of a square yeah. or a cylinder shape. Stunned. This is the best that we had for, for, for right now. Yeah, it's going to taste just as good. Um, so I'm going to cover the bottom in... These mat lines, like, yep, and then we're gonna add the fruit. Can I have one of the spoons? Okay, just enough to do a layer. Some ASMR. Some ASMR okay. I'm excited. Okay, there's our strawberries. It's a little bit of a thick layer, but that's okay. Okay, now we're gonna do the uh, the custard. So we're about a third of the custard that you have. <laughs> <laughs> and then now we're pouring the custard. Spread it a little bit. You know, it doesn't have to be perfect. It's gonna look really pretty from the outside, no matter what you do. Then we're going to do the cream. Let's see, dude, that really, Sorry, that really did turn into whipped cream. Yes, it did. That's what happens when you whip cream. <laughs> so about a third of this. If you're at home and you're watching this retrospectively, I'd say make a little more whipped cream. Yeah. It won't hurt. <laughs> I don't think you can ever do bad with extra whipped cream. Oh no, no. You can always just eat it. Yeah. Yes, it is. It's the stuff. I almost actually bought pre-made whipped cream, and then I saw the ingredients list. Ugh, this is so much better. Okay, there's there layer number one, so I'm just going to keep layering okay. it. Okay, keep layering everything till it's all the way to the tippity top. Um, I think we're, you know, we're, we're going to go ahead and almost finish up here on our things, but Kea is creating. Right? She's like at, she's wherever you're at, where, whenever you like make food, you're creating something out of like other things, right? Uh, Kay is creating there. She's going to go ahead and add the second layer of strawberries. And it's like a meticulous kind of thing. It's almost like an art form. I would say cooking is an art form. But uh, creating delicious dishes uh, um, can be always a reminder. A, a reminder of what? The creative process that mirrors the Lord. God himself creating everything, right? Creating the world since the foundation, since the beginning, since everything from way back, way back when he created everything, right? And, and, and you take a look and you see the wonderful beauty that the Lord has made, right? Everything uh, from, from, from the trees, from, 
the strawberries to uh, the birds in the sky, you know, like you see like the creation. So when you're making at home, when you're baking, when you're cooking, when you're uh, making these things and you're wondering, you know, I really wish I could connect baking or I could like focus a little bit more on God. Well, there's a way to focus, right? There's a way to kind of reflect that uh, uh, while doing it. You're creating, you're making, right? Uh, and who better to think of than the greatest creator of all time? And we're, we're talking someone that beats Van Gogh by a mile, a, a thousand miles. We're talking about someone that beats Picasso. Uh, all the Imagine all the greatest inventors, all the greatest cooks, all the greatest chefs, every single way, like kind of artist or, 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 or creator of any kind. And the Lord beats them. God tops them all. He's the one that created everything, everything. So uh, Genesis 1.31 Here's a reminder for all of you guys there uh, watching online. Genesis 1, 31 says, God saw all that he had made and said it was very, very good, right? So that's just a, another reminder for you when you're like at home and you're creating your, your dishes, you're creating your food. Uh, it's good, right? When you're looking at yourself, you're, you're, you're something created from the Lord and, and he's rejoicing in the fact that you exist and he has sent his son to redeem us, to redeem all of us so that we can really truly be good, truly be good, right? The Lord saw all of us and he said, you know, the, the only way for this uh, creation of mine that has fallen into sin, right, uh, is for me to redeem them through my son. So the Lord has really truly made you good, me good, all of us good, by sending his son to die for all of our sins. All of those things that make us bad, all of those choices that makes us bad, all those times that we fall off from God, from His, uh, from, from him, his word, right? The Lord redeems you and me. So I've got one single, oh my goodness, that looks great. That looks great. I cannot wait to try that. Okay, uh, so. Uh -huh. I just want to let you guys know that this is not my recipe. The recipe is available on a website called amandascooking.com. We can, we can link it if you guys want to see the full recipe because I might not have done it full justice. Mm -hmm. But I've done this, I made this for, um, for his ordination two years ago. I want to remind everybody, while you may see me very comfortable in front of the camera, Josh, or natural in front of the camera, Kay is, this is essentially her first time in front of, first cooking show, time on a camera first live stream thank you know you having me so thank you so, so, so thank you for for coming and taking the time to being with us i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and drop off and then i'll give it i'll, I'll let josh take over but here's nehemiah 8 10 go and enjoy food and sweet drinks and send some to those who have nothing prepared this day is holy to our lord do not grieve for the joy of the lord is your strength I, I, I would go, I, you know, we don't have too much time anymore, and I want Josh to get his final words in, but just rejoicing and savoring the words of that. The Lord is calling us to rejoice. The Lord is calling us to share. The Lord is calling. Everything we want, really, to show you guys and talk to you guys about today is kind of encapsulated right there. So thank you for taking the time to watching us tonight. Thank you for watching Kaya. We're going to try this, hopefully, on camera for you. So I'm going to pop over to uh, Josh. Up there, I just want to before we open this up and, and stir and finish and add the cranberries and last part. I just want to make this point because I, I, I think this is an important point or connection point uh, for maybe many of you who are watching. Oh, we got some comments before I do that. Uh, we have hospitality for Sunday being prepared for us. Yep. Yeah. All right, Al. Um, we'll 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 make sure you may have some. So, uh, okay. So here's something that maybe many of you may be struggling with. Some of you may think of yourselves as a side dish, and you're thinking, well, Pastor Ron, what do you mean by that? Sometimes when we're kind of off to the side and we're not the main attraction, sometimes it can feel like we're lost in the shadows or that we're the side dish of everything, and that the, the main dish or the person who's in front of the camera or whatever it might be is the main person, and they get all of the attention. Whoever that main person is, whoever it might be, they can't do what they're doing without the help of so many people like side dishes. It just accentuates and it helps make everything better. So if you feel like maybe you're not getting the attention you deserve or maybe that um, kind of where you're at, you're, you're kind of off to the side, just know the Lord sees you and we always give thanks for the way in which we have people who support us and who supplement and help us no matter who we are. 
So all of us in some form or fashion, at some time in our lives, get to be the main dish or the main course, but then there's a lot more times in our lives where we are the side dish. And because we're the side dish, sometimes we can feel underappreciated. But we should never feel that way. The Lord uses us, uses us in great and powerful ways as well. Pastor Jesus, go ahead and talk while I take the lid off of this. To the camera. Ethan, where do I have to go to like really put this in, like right in everyone's face? Right here? So I'm just coming right up to you guys because I really want you to see. This is absolutely beautiful. Uh, Josh, if you're, you're talking about side dishes, uh, look at this. It's being a side dish, being whatever you are, there's no, no shame in whoever you are. Look at, I mean, this is absolute beauty, right? Kea made this, and we're going to go ahead and try it. As you can see, the different layers. We've got the madelines, we've got the strawberries, we've got the whipped cream, the pudding, uh, or what do you call it? The custard. This is not something you want to eat by yourself. So we encourage sharing, and we're going to go ahead and try this live, I think. Do you guys want to try it? All right. Well, I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the cram, dried cranberries. Now, recipe calls for about half a cup, but because it's only half of what we're doing, we're going to do about a quarter of a cup. So, um, But as always, you can, you can put as much or as little as you want in there, and you can go ahead and um, to your liking. Um, but the, the the thing about the dried cranberries, um, in 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 deference to the the sweet potatoes, uh, the, the 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 texture and the flavor really complements it. And along with the curry and the different spices that are in here, really gives it the opportunity for a, a, a lot of flavor and and a lot of just uh, contrasting. Um, ways in which uh, we can just get a better appreciation for what it is. So one of these has the, the cranberries, and I will pick both of these up, and I will put both of those as much in front of the camera as well. Ethan, yeah, you you're zoomed in here on this camera, Ethan. Okay, so one has without, uh, one doesn't have the cranberry, obviously, and then this one in uh, over here has the cranberries in it. So hopefully you guys can get a chance to, to see those. And hopefully if you're cooking at home, you get a chance to try them and you get a chance to uh, see which one you like better, whether you like it with the cranberries or you like it without the cranberries. Mm. So, but tonight's all about side dishes and it's all about understanding or remembering uh, that we need more than just the main attraction. We need more than just uh, the main dish. And, and the, the, the side dishes give us a chance to realize the, 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 the greater picture and the, the grand scheme of things, that God gives us so much more and helps us fill in the gaps in a lot of different ways. So they're dishing up over there. I'm going to go get a couple of dishes, and we're going to dish up here as well. So I'm going to let them dish those up, and while they dish those up, I'm going to go get a couple of dishes. Awesome. So we're going to go ahead and try this live on camera. Um, melted with the whipped cream. Yeah, so if you don't chill your custard for long enough, then you're going to get what we kind of got. Well, you're actually supposed to chill the dish, so it's a Oh, the whole thing, well. the whole thing. Okay, I'm going to come up over here, right, you know, since we're kind of done uh, here for tonight. I want to ask everyone uh, that's still watching and they're still with us here tonight, uh, what's your favorite dish? And, and how will you, and you don't have to type it in the comment section anymore. You can kind of ponder this. Uh, uh, next time you make your favorite dish, how will you ponder the beauty that the Lord has provided? provided for you, the, the blessings that the Lord has for you. Uh, after watching this uh, live stream, uh, I, get, I hope and I pray to God that uh, it has at least guided you or directed you back to his word, back to his scripture, to see that the Lord is good, good indeed, and he loves you, and he wants to have a relationship with you, he wants to save you, he wants you to know who he is, and he wants you to rejoice, rejoice. I am inviting all of you to Josh's uh, Sunday service, to my Sunday service, wherever you are. If you're watching on Facebook and you happen to live in Aurora, you're probably closer to Josh's church in the surrounding areas. If you're watching over in Nap or in Winfield, in those areas over there, Wheaton, Warrenville, then uh, you're probably closer to Christ your Savior. So uh, let's see if uh, we've got some plates prepared over here for us. I'll go back and get some, some silverware. 
I'll just use my, my same fork. Hold yeah, on. I'll just use my same fork. By the way, our baby is, are, you, are we still live? Are we still, you can still see us? By the way, my baby has been great. No, 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 no comments, no, no nothing. She's not even snoring. Yeah. She's a sound sleeper, so. All right, do I get one? Awesome. Okay, let's try. I think I'm going to try the food first and then I'll try the dessert. Yeah. Oh, here. All right. There we go. All right. So here's one of each for you. Okay. I think Kaya has hers and already. Kaya has hers. All right. And Ethan, we got plenty left for you. Don't worry. So, so. so here we go. Cheers, guys. I'm going to try the one without the cranberries first. Mmm. Excellent. I like the cranberries. Mm. I haven't tried with the cranberries. You've never made the, the skillet uh, sweet potatoes, coconut, and, and curry in it? This would be a great addition to, if you've got to bring a side dish next time, to, to a potluck or to, hey, I would even say may, maybe even bring this to a Thanksgiving dinner. Mm. Trying the other one now? It's beautiful. Mmm. Okay, you're right. The cranberries make it fantastic. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. This is great, Josh. I love the spice. Yeah, it is very, it is, has a, it actually does have a kick. The cranberry was my addition on this one, so. Yeah. Good that was good. All right, I'm going to go ahead and uh, put uh, the sweet potatoes away. I'm ready for the custard, so. Uh, custard going in. I'm just going to try and grab a little bit of Tripe the Madeline. A little, a little bit of everything. All right, here we go. Oh my gosh. Mm. Okay, you always knock it mm. out of the park. This is this awesome. This is good. Thank Hopefully you. Hopefully, yours at home tastes as good as this tastes here. It's fantastic. Mm hmm. You let it chill, it'll look fantastic mm. too. Yeah. Mm hmm. Josh. We got a thumbs up from our cameraman. Thumbs up from the cameraman, Ethan. So, uh, do you want me to close off in prayer? Do you want me mm -hmm. to send everyone off? Thank you guys so much for joining us tonight. It is a blessing to be yeah. here. It is a blessing to be able to share the recipes. Thank you for uh, having my wife here. Thank you to all. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord always be with you. May he always remind you of the beautiful things that he has, the bounty that he has given to us, the side dishes, the main dishes, the courses. Next week we'll have a better, uh, even better. It's always going to get better, right? So next week we've got different recipes. Watch out on Monday because we'll be posting the recipe so that you can uh, cook with us at home too. So uh, a quick prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for tonight. Thank you for the food. Bless everybody all, all across the world. Bless everyone that has food. Bless those that don't. Uh, make sure and we hope and we ask that you may continue to provide for all people. Uh, no matter where they are, no matter who they are, Lord, bless us all. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And please do share this on your Facebook page so other people get a chance to view this. They can not just um, uh, uh, enjoy the scripture passages, but they can also enjoy the food. And they can enjoy more than just the food. They can enjoy the scripture passages as well. And we just hope and pray that the audience grows. And so that um, make, means that more people get a chance to experience God and experience God's word. So God bless. Have a great night.